Oh, man. Let me skip down. Sexy Red said, not all black women are liberals. I'm not. I got you, Sexy Red. <laughs> oh, my God. Mimi A, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. The woman should be modest in her appearance. The Bible has all the advice we need for every aspect of our lives. I agree. But most of y'all ain't going to follow it, though. The revolutionary... Uh, Sebio, he said, I'm moving back to Africa as soon as I can. Oh, I know that, brother. I know the date. I saw your plane ticket. Never you were a first. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me see here. So I just wanted to say your wisdom enables me to filter out some of the pointed views that are not towards me as an Italian. You have a knack for eloquently explaining what straight men are going through in this liberal driven world. Yes. Yes, I noticed that many of the things that I say are resonating with other demographics, but I always point my comments towards the so-called black man because the so-called black man is dealing with things from a perspective that um, that is truly singular. Okay, it's truly singular. And the so-called black man has a history of getting many of many of the things that were meant for him hijacked by other demographics. So I'm always very cognizant of that. Let me see. And that said, Judah, be careful with this Bible topic. The Bible brings out all type of spirits, man. The Bible is a book where everybody believes that their feelings should trump what the what the text actually says. And I'm not even just talking about the liberal black woman in the church system. I'm talking about in that, amongst every group. You have a lot of people who are so emotional over the Bible. And... Um, no damn well they cannot explain certain aspects of the scriptures, but they think that their pride, um, their pride and their zeal is going to cover up for their lack of knowledge. So the Bible is, is a very, very, very powerful book and power can manifest itself on the right hand side or the left hand side. This is the second person, brother, please do that video on fornication. Maybe I'm thinking on a two-dimensional level, but I looked up the word in a dictionary and I couldn't find the definition you spoke of. Brothers have to understand something. The biblical term that's used is not going to be what you find in a secular dictionary. Okay? Many words have had their meaning changed, particularly since the mid-1700s. So it's very important that if you want to understand what a term is or what it means in the Bible... That you look it up biblically, that you look at the original word in the original language, whether it be Hebrew, Aramaic, or as it's also known as Saraic or Greek. It's very important that you look up that word or, or the Latin so that you get a more accurate understanding of the concept. Okay? Because the English language, English language is a very tricky language because one word can mean a multitude of things depending on the context and sometimes as I've stated they change the definition of a word like if you were to call someone swarthy back in the 1700s that was talking about a so-called black man but if you use that word swarthy today it can mean a so-called black man it can mean a so-called East Indian man it can mean a so-called Arab man it can mean a so-called white man with a tan right what they claim is olive skinned <laughs> back in the 16 1700s and before words had a totally different meaning if you call somebody olive skinned before the 1700s you were talking about a so-called black man because an olive only comes in two colors it comes in black or green right why do you think in an ancient kemet and other cultures where the people were so-called black they would manifest fertility in the form of a man with green skin. Whether it was Asar or Heru or what have you. They would depict him as having green skin or Tammuz. 
because that represented fertility. When you call somebody olive skinned back then, you were talking about a so called black man. Now, you call somebody olive skinned, once again, they changed that definition over to a Caucasian person with a tan. All right? Or somebody who's like maybe a Greek or an Italian, somebody like that. So words are very tricky. You just can't look into the dictionary to find what a concept is. You have to do real research. Miramax 7 said he was speaking from his biblical perspective. That's true. But I don't know if his particular perspective is backed by scripture or not. Well, the easiest way to look it up is to look it up. <laughs> Nine Mastermind said, look up fornication in the Old Testament of the Bible. Search it up on Google. Thank you, Mastermind. You clearly know what you're talking about. Let's see here. Terrence McAllister said, Brothers, am I the only one who noticed that when the sister speaks and the camera shows the audience, the men are not laughing, but the women are like she's telling jokes? Of course, because, brothers, once again, the woman is a child, man. The only time the woman is truly serious is when it comes to her children because of the maternal DNA. Or when it comes to her money, meaning the job. Everything else, the woman, for the most part, looks at as a big joke. Okay? <laughs> they look at it as a big joke. Let me see here. Frequency said, I think you should have put this in your Women Begin to Mature 45 series. You know, that's a possibility, but as I've stated, many of the themes that I touch on, they, they cross-reference one another. I just like to diversify many of the themes of my series so that I can be more particular with what I'm trying to, with what I'm trying to address in that particular video. Fitness Guru says, if a man wants to run his mouth, there is another level things can go to. But with a woman, there is no place to go, so it's pointless to ever argue with a female. Exactly. Exactly, sir. And that's one of the main reasons why it's easier to communicate with men than with women, because men understand that there are barriers when it comes to respect. The woman does not understand barriers, so she'll say anything, because this society has taught her that there's never a reason to hit a woman. Until, unfortunately for them, they run into one of those dudes who does not respect what society is telling him or who may just be out of control hammer time said damn you marginalized the hell out of sister Shahraza ali brother no disrespect this is a simp free zone you got to find a channel better for you god bless you brother you crazy to hear the truth and have a good laugh too Brother, you have a rare talent. You know, every time that you speak, you should let your personality out. Why dim down your personality? You, know, you should always be able to mix in some humor if you can. You know, well-placed humor. <laughs> Tiffany Robinson said, The behavior of the liberal black woman is just a learned behavior from slavery. Women had to learn this behavior, so it has to be unlearned. Uh, not quite. Not quite. The woman by nature is an agent of chaos and an opportunist. Uh, what the slavery system did was it gave the woman a very concrete view of her man being marginalized. But once again, not all black people were in slavery. It's a very unfortunate aspect of the slavery programming that our people have gone through in the school system where every so-called black person is taught that we all came from slaves. That's that's more devastating than anything. The slavery programming in the school system has been just as if not more damaging than slavery itself. Because for all intents and purposes, if we had our own school systems, we may have been able to or should have been able to overcome whatever whatever program was put upon us during slavery for those of us who came from ancestors that were enslaved because you have many so-called blacks in this society today who do not come from slavery who came from the blacks who were brought over here from Europe 
or who came from the original aboriginal blacks that were here in America already. Okay, so a lot of that slavery narrative is pushed and promoted to make sure that the so-called black man and woman always feel incomplete. That they always feel detached from, from their origins. So there's a strategic reason why they push the slave narrative. And of course, slavery did happen. It's just not on the scale that they make it out to be. 40 million black people brought over in slavery, all that nonsense. That's just, that's just madness. Yeah, this is way too long. I'm not going to read all this. She said, female slaves were conditioned over centuries by the Willie Lynch practice of controlling slaves to not trust any male slaves. Uh, the Willie Lynch letter is not real. A lot of pro-blacks are not going to like that, but no, the Willie Lynch letter is not real. Okay, that was put out by the pro-blacks back in the, uh, I believe the late 50s or early 60s to try to put a little bit of a boost into what they were trying to get accomplished. And I'm not saying that the sentiments that were on the Willie Lynch letter were not based in some form of truth, but no, the Willie Lynch letter is not real. Let's see here. Young Shad TV says the Bible has never helped so-called black people. But Black Wall Street was built with a black power mindset. Uh, Young Shad TV, with all due respect, brother, you're not a, you're not a historian. Um, and that's part of the issue that I have with the so-called pro-blacks. They speak so presumptuously and they have no idea what they're talking about. That's why you cannot find any group or any demographic who goes to the so-called pro-black for accurate information. I'm just being real with you. The Bible has always helped so-called black people. As a matter of fact, the Bible was at the crux of all of the slave rebellions. I, I've yet to see one so-called black revolution that has been led by the Afrocentrists. I've not seen one yet. <laughs> the Nat Turner Rebellion was instigated by the Bible and by the passages that Nat Turner read in the book of Revelation. Please tell me when the Kemet people are going to lead a revolution based on the Metu Netter. I'll wait for that. Philip Montsor says, though many points you make I do agree with, such as how liberalism and feminism are destroying the black family. It seems to me you believe men have all rights in a relationship and the woman has none. Very archaic thinking. My brother, well, no disrespect to you, bro. But if you're a black Luciferian or a so-called black progressive, we're only brothers in the flesh, not in the spirit. And that's the problem with most of you, uh, quote unquote, black liberals. You're actually black Luciferians and you have the nerve to speak about liberalism and you're a black liberal, your damn self. Nowhere in anything that I've ever said, have I said that so-called black men have all the, you know, they have all the relationship power and things of that nature. But as the man, you're supposed to be the head. Maybe you're not built to be the head over your woman. That's a personal problem that you have. You have to deal with that, bro. But don't project that on me. Let's see that. Stephen Abraham, the female Benedict Arnold. Yeah, I think that this brother was just being sarcastic. Ashley Greer says, I'm a good black woman that still exists. <laughs> That's up for your man to vouch for. When I see so-called black women coming on the internet saying things like that, uh, I get a Shakespearean vibe about it. Me thinks she does protest too much. Let's see. Humphrey Jones says, true that pro-blacks want a hug from a white man, but going to Africa doesn't make you pro-black as most continental Africans are mentally enslaved. Well, then, bro, hey, you should head over there or, you know, I mean, assuming if you're so-called pro-black, you can head over there and liberate them. Wouldn't you rather head over to a country in Africa that's majority black 
and liberate them rather than be in America where it's majority white. Supposedly, you pro-blacks love the motherland so much, allegedly. Let me see here. Priest Shamawan says, excellent commentary. Thank you, brother. Christian Castro says, put the weed down. Hey, that's what I've been saying for a long time. So-called black man gets upset when I say that. They make a million and one excuses. That's how I know that that weed is an idol for the so-called black man. And let me say this also. These days, the so-called black woman is a big weed head to her damn self. A lot of these bros are big weed heads. Amy Hankin says, Peace Chronicles. Peace. King Abijah says, My family is Caribbean and we definitely have culture. Okay. If you say so, bro. Let me say this. On my mother's side... I'm also, quote-unquote, so-called Caribbean, okay? Um, this is one of the major problems that our people have here in the Western Hemisphere. We have certain factions of our people who are in denial about their so-called culture. And they try to act as if nobody knows. Uh, you know, certain people might get offended by what I'm saying or what I'm about to say. It is what it is, okay? But there are many demographics of so-called people of color in the western hemisphere who try to put up the facade of culture whether they be from the dominican republic or haiti or puerto rico or the virgin islands or jamaica or what have you and they tell you about how they have culture first off all y'all eat pork okay all y'all eat pork whether you from dr puerto rico the caribbean islands all y'all eat pork south america and I have news for you. There was no swine here before the European got here. So I don't know what culture you're talking about, bro. Because I know for a fact, all those people from the Caribbean, including so-called black Americans, they love the swine, which is just an overgrown rat. That's all it is. So you can talk about that culture all you want. I know for a fact that certain demographics or quote unquote certain tribes, they love to talk about how they still have a culture and they have this and they have that. A lot of y'all don't really know what culture is or what it means. It means knowing why you're doing something, why you're doing it, where does this come from, meaning knowing the origins of it. A lot of y'all in the Caribbean celebrate the Bacchanal. You know that the term Bacchanal comes from the Bacchus, right? You know the Bacchus was a transgender. You know that, right? He was a hermaphrodite. I hope that you understand that, brother. And I say that with all due love and respect. But I know for a fact a lot of different tribes, a lot of people of color from different islands and stuff, they love to talk about how they have culture. Like back when I worked in corporate America, I used to work around a lot of Haitians. They'd be real proud. Oh, Haiti this and Haiti that and Haiti this and Haiti that. I'm like, if Haiti's so great, why y'all come to America for? Haiti's so damn great, but you here. And Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere by economy, but the richest based off of natural resources. So that means what? That means that y'all getting pimped. That's what that means. And I say that with all due love and respect, but it just amazes me how proud people get about their so-called island. And like I said, I have family from the islands. Let's keep things in proper perspective. Let's see here. Love Pink said, humbly asking, is it possible for you to put up a few clips of the kind of women you find upright? I can respect the discussion of a problem, but I can actively work toward change with a solution and example. Some women are not created by choice, but rather environment. I agree with that. They're technically infants when trying to understand the knowledge you're relaying because of where they were raised and how. After the condemning truth being spoken must come rebuilding with a stronger foundation. They need a blueprint, i.e. example. They need to see it, unfortunately, in this internet technical age. You know that most times the few teach the many. Yes, I agree in many respects and stay humble. Honestly, I've seen good women beaten and it was sad in the presence of the Most High 
What does a humble woman do when dealing with such things? Who is going to control or stop an angry husband in his home? It makes the women run away. There's factors to be considered in reality. You can be the most respectful woman. It has no guarantee he will return love. Uh, let me say this because this sister, she said a lot. And um, that is a conundrum. But once again, that's why I direct my commentary to the man. Because it's the man's job to have order in the household. She states that she's seen good women get beaten up. That's from her perspective. I have no idea if they were good or not. I always state that I speak to the man because when the man is in order and he has wisdom and understands what he's supposed to do, then he knows how to correct his woman. I say this all the time. If you have to whoop a woman's ass and she's not physically attacking you, if you feel that compelled to whoop her ass, that means that you shouldn't be with her. If she's that off and that wicked. The scriptures tell you not to be a lion in your household, not to be frantic like a lion in your household, meaning ferocious all the time. You support, you're supposed to be supportive of your wife and loving to your wife and strong for your wife, not always on your wife. Okay? Now, in regards to what the sister's saying about a good woman or the type of woman that's a good woman, there's many scriptures. I'll probably, maybe I'll do a video on this down the line. But once again, my channel's geared towards the man. I don't want to get too focused on the woman because. Next thing you know, they're hijacking the channel. I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I ain't got time for all that, man. But in Proverbs, it tells you that when a man findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing. Right? So what's a wife? When we read Proverbs, the 31st chapter, it gives us the details on what a good wife is. Even though that's also metaphorical because that's talking about the knowledge and the wisdom of the Most High. All right? The Holy Spirit, per se. But in general, the wife has to be humble, she has to be meek, she has to respect her man, things of that nature. Which is very difficult because the women today are being raised in matriarchal environments. So, once again, it always comes back to the man. If the woman is not willing to understand her role and her place in the household, then brother, you should not wife her up. That's how that go. And it's not that difficult to understand. Let me also say this, it's also very common for so-called good women or so-called humble women to gravitate towards angry men, to gravitate towards malicious men, to gravitate towards quote-unquote street dudes or what have you. So a lot of times women like to create these scenarios where they can play the victim role. Am I saying that that's the case with the situation that you're talking about? No, not necessarily, but... That does happen. Okay? That does happen. Ashley Greer is back. She says you have to really listen to people. Yeah, you, you, you sure do. You sure damn do. Oh, man. Brother said, my dad is loving listening to your videos. As I listen to them out loud, he's like, uh, uh, exactly. Hey, these are things that I've learned from my father and through life experience, bro. Many of the things that I say I learned from the scriptures through life experience and also my father teaching me a lot of things to watch out for. That's the job of a father is to, is to instruct you on what to watch out for and what to do when bad things happen not always about what when good things are going to happen what to do when bad things happen and how to avoid them that's the point hey chronicles i hope that you see this you stated that black people built most cities this is a matter that i have a suspicion of but have struggled to find a source do you have a source for this thanks yes you can read genesis the 10th chapter Read Genesis the 10th chapter and it'll tell you about who built many of the megalithic structures and the, and the megalithic cities. All megalithic structures 
were built by people of color. All of them. Whether you're talking about the pyramids, the Sphinx, Baalbek in Lebanon, Stonehenge, Machu Picchu, so on and so forth. They were all built by the so-called aboriginal people, which you would call so-called black. Okay? Once again, read Genesis, the 10th chapter. It tells you about the building of the cities, Kalna and Akkad, Babel, so on and so forth, which were built by the children of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Well, in the case of Kalna and Akkad, they were built by the sons of Ham. Okay? Which even most of the Caucasian scholars will say are the, are the ancestors of the so-called black Africans. In regards to Baalbek, which was in, uh, in ancient Canaan, that was built by the Canaanites, who are also Hamitic. All right? Even when you go to ancient Greece, and uh, the original Greeks, prior to being conquered by Alexander the Macedonian, they were people of color. And of course, this is something of great dispute amongst certain factions who state that uh, Japheth is the Caucasian. Um, no, that's not the case. The original inhabitants of the, of the Aegean area or the Mediterranean areas, uh, including the Italic Peninsula, they were all people of color. Right? All you have to do is look up the Etruscans, who were Shemitic. They were of the children of Lud, right? the, or the Ludim. They were people of color. You can look them up. Okay? They carried on many of the practices of the Assyrians and brought them over to the Italic Peninsula. And when I say the Assyrians, I'm talking about the Akkadians. Uh, they were known in conventional history, the, uh, the Etruscans, they were known in conventional history while they dwelled in the land in the ancient time that was known as Asia Minor, that we call today Turkey. They were known in conventional history as the Lydians. Okay? Now, the Etruscans, they were a part of a conglomerate of Mediterranean peoples of, of Shemitic and Hamitic extraction that became known as the Sea Peoples. Uh, they settled in the northern part of Kemet. Okay? So, they were comprised of the Philistines, the Etruscans, and uh, certain other peoples. The Philistines were also Hamitic. Okay, they were they were so-called Black African, and they also at one time dwelt in ancient Greece. They were known as the Pelasgians. That's why. This is why when you read Genesis the tenth chapter, it tells you about the Philistine and it associates the Philistine with the Kaftarim, because they're not quite sure if the Philistines dwelt along with the Kaftarim in a part of Kemet or if they transplanted to Crete. Once again, what we know is that the Philistines also settled in parts of Greece where they became known in conventional history as the Pelasgians. And uh, they became a part of the confederation known in antiquity as the Sea Peoples, where eventually they landed in quote-unquote Canaan and, and they became one of the arch nemeses of, of Israel. Okay, so once again, um, all of the megalithic structures, they were built by people who will be classified today as so-called black people. El Boogie says, this is a great video. Thank you. You're welcome. Rev Kanye said, I love your channel. I agree with most of what you say, but you should do your best not to use the Lord's name in vain. Well, brother, this is a confusion that many church-going so-called black people have, and people in general they don't know what the Lord's name is. So they think that when somebody says God damn or such and such, that they're using the Lord's name in vain. The Lord's name is not God. The Most High gives his name. And that's the name that he's referencing when he says, do not use my name in vain. So it would behoove all of us to learn the appropriate name of the Most High so that we actually know when to use that allegation that someone is using his name in vain in the proper context. Oh, Love Pink is back. She said, also, can you discuss to our women yet to be married how the black man shows he loves the black woman as we are instructed to respect our husband so she knows she is safe? Thank you kindly. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Uh, yeah, the so-called black man is supposed to love his wife like Christ loved the church. But at the same time, to be quite frank with you, I spend more time on this channel trying to make sure that the so-called black man knows exactly what a wife is. Before I talk about how he's supposed to love his wife, you have to know what a wife is first. And that's part of the problem. A lot of these young so-called black boys, they're raised to believe that they're supposed to love their wife and love this and love that. But first you have to know what a wife is. When you know what a wife is, then you know what you're supposed to do with that person, how you're supposed to treat that person. So that's what I concentrate on. Once, once we establish the difference between a wife and a concubine, then we can go other places. Yes, Jeremiah 6 and 16. Seek ye the old paths. GTG488W says, So you don't think it's natural for a woman to desire, prefer her partner to be monogamous? Of course it is. Of course it's natural for a woman to prefer her partner to be monogamous. <laughs> People prefer a lot of things. It does not mean that that's how things are necessarily supposed to be. But once again... The woman has the power to put forth her preferences in this society because the powers that be cater to the woman. In other societies, it's much more commonplace, so it's not as traumatic to the woman. But still, the nature of the woman is to be jealous. And once again, if you're dealing with a man uh, who has wisdom, then he's going to know for the most part if the woman that he's dealing with is someone that, that he holds in such high regard that he does not want to throw off the balance of his relationship with another woman if the woman that he's already